Hey ladies, I hope you're able to enjoy the sunshine and this glorious spring weather. This week that we have the privilege of hearing from one of our own mentor moms, Sandy Welch, as she shares her story and with finances and debt and saving and helps us to think through the practical side of that. Financial issues and money are one of the leading causes of marital, marital strife, and we don't want that to be the case for us. And so um, we want to use what the Lord has given us wisely. And so Sandy helps us to think through all of those practical things like budgeting, saving, borrowing, insurance, um, just all of those practical things. So I hope that as you listen, and as you talk with your group this week, and this will be a way to help strengthen your marriage um, and not something that is causing strife. And so I hope that these practical tips are really helpful for you guys. Hey ladies, Erica asked me to talk to you this week on the topic of finances. Now, I know that I did the same thing last year, but what happened was when it was my week to do the topic, I think we got shut down in lockdown like right before that. And so what we ended up doing was a Facebook Live and a lot of you hopped on and were asking questions. And so... What I'm going to attempt to do is go over some of the things that I went over last year, but kind of incorporate some of the things that you had questions about, and hopefully this will be something that's very informative for you. So finances, um, that can be a tricky topic for some people. It's something that can be a real stumbling block in marriages a lot of times. I know it wasn't mine. And so I just want to give you a little bit of background on me and where I'm coming from as far as this topic is concerned. Um, I grew up in a home where I was not taught about money. My dad took care of all the finances. My mom was not involved in it. I don't really know for sure if they even talked about big purchases or if most of the decision was his. Um, so really no help in that area. My dad did help me buy my first couple of cars, um, co-signing for me, but I didn't have any direction as far as monthly budgeting and making sure I had the money for everything I had to pay for. And so needless to say, when I moved out around the age of 21 and was on my own, I ended up with credit card debt and uh, owing the IRS. So now that is something that I took care of. And by the time I was married, I think those issues were pretty much over with. Um, my husband did a really great job with college and working a lot and not taking on a lot of debt for that. So he did have a little bit of college debt when we got married, but we paid it off I think within the first couple of years, maybe even within the first year, um, because there just wasn't a lot to it. And that's one thing I know now. Um, student loan debt is a huge burden for a lot of people. The costs have, they're just, they've grown exponentially over what it was when I was college age and my husband was college age so many years ago. So, um, when we got married, he was the budgeting person and I was not. <laughs> he tried to get me involved and it was something that I was just so resistant to. And I think a lot of that was just immaturity, not having ever had to deal with it before. And he uh, is almost five years older than me. So he was out of college. He was going to seminary at the time. He'd been on his own for a while and so he'd had like a lot of years to work on this and learn budgeting. And another factor in it was that his parents had filed for bankruptcy twice. And that was something that he did not ever want to happen to him. So it's something that he really felt very strongly about. So he, he tried to get me involved in budgeting. He would sit down with me and show me his spreadsheet and how he worked at all. And I just, I was very uncooperative. I wasn't interested in it at all. And it's something that I regret a lot now. Um, I know that we would be a lot further along if I had been involved and really cared about it in the beginning of our marriage. 
So we, um, he pastored a church in Texas for 10 years and we lived in the parsonage. So during that time, we didn't pay rent. Um, he was not making a whole lot. He was bivocational. He, so he had an outside full-time job plus the church, but we had, uh, three children while he was, you know, in ministry and we, um, didn't save like I wish we would have looking now back like hindsight, we could have saved so much money while not having a house payment or paying rent. And that's something that I have a big regret about. I don't dwell on it and I've, I've moved past it. And my past is something that I'm forgiven of. So it's not something I focus on, but I have used that to teach my children and when talking to others to help them to see how important it is to plan ahead and really live within your means, live below your means, actually, I guess is really the point here. Um, so we, um, while he was in ministry and he was pastoring, there was a point where he lost his job and there was no way we could live on what the church paid us. It was a small church. And so we went on WIC. I had babies and was breastfeeding. So we had that for the baby and myself. And so my two youngest children um, were on Medicaid and during this time. And I, I don't know where we would have been without it. It was such a blessing to us at the time and um, helped us to be able to get the health care we needed for our children. And so that's, that's something that I went through that I know a lot of people, if they were to just look at me now, that wouldn't be something that they would probably suspect. And I don't think that's ever anything to be ashamed of. When you need the help, take the help that you can get. And um, so it helped us for a few years until my husband got a better job. And um, we were able to save for a house and we moved uh, into our own home. It was the first home we had bought. And this was like 2007. And um, during this time with small babies and children, my parents had moved out of state and I was isolated from friends with having moved to where he was pastoring. And, and I used shopping as a coping mechanism. And um, so I, I mean, it was, I think it was an addiction. I was addicted to shopping. It made me feel better. And, um, so it really came to a point in 2008 after we had bought our first house that we couldn't pay the bills anymore. And he was getting calls at work, which just horrified me that that was happening. And so we both realized that there had to be changes. And so we uh, started following, uh, Dave Ramsey. I don't know if you've heard of him. I know there are lots of, uh, programs to follow out there. Um, so I'm not saying that, oh, I recommend this and this is the only one, but it worked very well for us and it helped us to get out of debt and with uh, credit card debt and vehicle debt, I think we had about 35,000 in debt. And so we took two and a half years. That's what it took to get past that and to get out of that debt. And we still had our mortgage um, but one of the things we did right with the house is when we first bought was buying, we didn't buy more house than we could afford. And so we weren't foreclosed on, we never missed a house payment. And that was just such a blessing that at least we did that right. Um, and so it's something that we have done every time we've moved is made sure that we did not buy more house than we could handle. And the loan from the bank, like they'll give you more than what you should probably take. And so that's, we just set a budget for ourselves with what we were comfortable with for our family and have stuck with it. Um, so that's kind of the background on, on our financial situation and kind of how it started and what led us to want to live a debt-free life. And so it's now been... I think this year in February, we hit the 10 year mark. So it's been 10 years since we first started working on getting out of debt and started um, just changing our lifestyle and the way we lived. 
And um, so when we moved here, um, we were tempted to look at houses that were more than we were really comfortable with just because we wanted a certain type of house. I wanted these certain things. And the more we thought about it and prayed about it, we knew that we just couldn't do it, that we had to stick with our, um, like our plan, our budgeting plan and what we had set out for ourselves to be able to keep living the way that we were living. And so we ended up buying a house here that was, um, it was a foreclosure. It needed work. It was very dirty when we moved in. And that was really hard for me. But I'm very thankful that we stuck to our guns and did it because when we sold it between, um, we got a very good deal on it, obviously, because it was a foreclosure. And so between the work we put into it and the increased value, we had over $100,000 worth of equity in that house when we sold it. And so that was a huge blessing to our family. And it took sacrifice and finances take sacrifice. There's things that we have to make decisions about, like what's important to us, what are our goals? And um, so those are the kinds of things you have to think about when it comes to finances. And sometimes people are not on the same page, like my husband and I were not in the beginning. And a lot of times you have one spouse who is the spender and one who is not. And um, I've like gone like, really far the other way. I have to be really careful about it sometimes because I will just not spend money. And even if it's something I need, like bras, um, (laughs) sometimes it's just hard. And I think it's because I, I want so much not to go back to the way I was before that sometimes it's easy to go too far the opposite direction. But, um, so that can be hard sometimes, but, um, We've learned about budgeting and what works for our family. Um, And really having a budget is like the number one thing. And there are a lot of budgeting apps out there. I know there's mint.com. There's um, youneedabudget.com, which I have used. I've also used every dollar. And I'm sure there are more out there that I haven't mentioned But really what works for me the best is putting it all down on paper. Now, I will use online versions like to plan things out and like I'll I'll plan things out, like put all of the expenses I know are coming in a month where I can just see it at a glance. But I keep like daily, weekly logs on paper because that's just how it works best for me. And then I can see it at a glance. I remember it really well if I've written it down. Um. But budgeting is key and um, sticking to the budget. Like once you make the budget, you have to stick to it. And in your marriage, you need to decide on that budget together um, because you want to be on the same page with it. You want to have similar goals. You want, if you're working towards a similar goal, it's a lot easier to get there. So having those conversations and talking about what your goals are for the budget. Um, and like we, I talk about the whole year, we talk about vacation and, and big things that are coming up. Um, and my husband doesn't always like that. (laughs) He does not like budgeting conversations, which is really funny since he was the one who was always trying to get me to do it in the beginning. And don't get me wrong. We're on the same page and we do it together. But when I say, we need to talk about money or we need to have a budgeting conversation soon. Like this look in his eyes, I can just tell. And so recently I said to him, I said, you know, when I say that we need to have a budget talk, you look like you would rather have needles poked in your eyes. (laughs) And he laughed at me and he said, well, no, not my eyes, but maybe under my fingernails. (laughs) So (laughs) that is um, how much he just doesn't like to have to do it, but he does, which I'm thankful for. So, um, something about budgeting, you can waste $10,000 a year with just $27 and 39 cents of frivolous spending every day. 
And I mean, when we're, if we're doing that at the time, that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you multiply that over days and weeks and months, it adds up to a lot of money. And that's what happened with us um, going out to eat, buying clothes, just buying lots of things that weren't part of a plan, that weren't budgeted for, that were just spontaneous. Um, that is what, that is how we ended up in so much credit card debt. It's that little spending. I mean, it's easy to remember your house payment and car payment and things like that. But the little daily spending where you just go out to the store here and there or order this online and don't really track it, that's the type of thing that can get us in trouble. So, um, and one thing I learned to do is avoid Target. That was a big um, money suck for me. And so I just stopped going in. I just hardly ever go anymore. So one of the other important things about finances is to spend less than you make. And you have to have a plan for it. You have to know how much you make. You have to know what your expenses are. And you have to have a plan for if you're going to save for um, a vacation, if you have a big purchase you need to make, like a car or an appliance. Our dryer went out a couple of years ago and we were sticking to a budget and we looked at lots of really fancy dryers that just were not in the budget at the time. And so we now have a dryer that has the loudest buzzer noise you could possibly imagine. And it annoys everybody in the house, but it's a dryer that works and it fit our budget at the time. So I'm kind of stuck with it until it dies. And, you know, knowing how things go, that probably, that dryer will probably live forever just because I hate the buzzer on it so much. <laughs> But um, anyway, so spending less than you make, it can be done. And this is one time where you, well, we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to others in any way, not as moms, not as, you know, just all sorts of things, but definitely don't compare your finances to someone else. Our situations are all unique and, um, we all have different needs, different situations in our home. Jobs are different. The money is different. So don't compare yourself to others. Don't look at what other people have because that's where discontentment can creep in. And so think about yourself and your family and your budget and don't worry about what other people are doing. Um, I've had all, several people ask me about um, our boys because we put them through five years of private school. And so I've gotten questions about that just in passing about how we afford it. And I'll tell you the way we've afforded it is we've made a lot of sacrifices. My husband does have a very good job, but also something you need to keep in mind is you're not going to be making the same kind of money when you first get married or when you're first having kids as you will be later on with raises and just things that happen, things change. And so there's no way that we could have put children through private school 10 years ago. In fact, we did have them in private school um, at the time and we ended up pulling them out. And that's when I started homeschooling was to, it's something that I felt God was calling me to do and it helped with our budget at the time. And that's not something homeschooling and all of that. That's all personal to each um, person, just like all schooling is. But um, we've been able to do private school, but it's because we've made a lot of sacrifices to do it. And now this fall, we're going to have two our two boys in college at the same time. And so that's where all of my money will be going for the foreseeable future. <laughs> but our goal is for our boys to graduate with their four-year degree as close to debt-free as possible. And I, I think that, I mean, we've lived this debt-free lifestyle in front of them and shown them the way to do it. And so it's something that they are both committed to doing and want to do is graduate with as little debt as possible. Um, and so there's going to be lots more sacrifices in our future, but it's something that I feel 
blessed to do, to be able to give them that um, and to help them with that and to, to give them a starter in their future where they are not saddled with a ton of student loan debt that just multiplies because of interest. And um, it's something that I feel very strongly about and, and want to encourage all of you to think, don't wait to think about college when they're two or three years from it. Start thinking about it now. Start researching it. Um, even as prepared as I feel we are, I wish that I would have even been looking into it long before I did because there's just so much to learn. But um, that is one thing that was important to us. And so spending less than we make has been very important in order for us to reach that goal. Um, now, I will say this recently. For the first time in 10 years, we have a car loan and it's not something we'll have long. It's just something we're also working on selling our house right now. So we didn't want to um, deplete cash funds. So we do have a car loan right now, but the plan is to pay that off within a year. And I can say that this is the first time I felt comfortable doing that. I don't worry about making the payment or having that debt because I know it's something that it was planned for. It was something we talked about. It wasn't something we just rushed out and did. Um, so we have a plan. We have a plan for paying it off quickly. And so it's not something I'm nervous about. I can see how we've grown over the last 10 years and we have control over our finances and have learned how to live within our means or even below our means. So one of the other things that is so important to finances is saving. You have to save money. There are going to be rainy days. There are going to be um, just all kinds of things that will come up. A broken dryer, a broken down vehicle, someone gets sick and you have a lot in medical bills. There, there's just like an, an endless amount of things that could happen. And saving and having money set aside is um, what will save you and what will keep something that could just be a catastrophe and a huge disaster from being that. Um, when you have money saved to be able to handle those type of emergencies, then they just become an inconvenience. And inconveniences are a whole lot easier to deal with than catastrophes as far as that's concerned. Like for some people, a dryer breaking, that's a major catastrophe um, because Sometimes there's just, you don't have the money to fix the dryer or you don't have the money to replace it. Our uh, refrigerator quit working recently. And as much as I hated the thought of us having to go and replace it without putting it on credit, I knew that we could. And that was a very freeing feeling to know that if we had to do it, we could. Thankfully, the company um, covered the cost of it. So we didn't have to worry about that, but it's peace of mind knowing that you can handle situations like that when they come up. And we were able to go and buy a mini refrigerator to use for the week that we had to wait for the repair. And that was another thing that was a blessing um, is being able to do that because that's not something that everyone can just go out and do. But we've been able to do it because we've spent the last 10 years planning and working um, towards financial freedom. So saving, it is so important. And 10 years ago, we worked with $1,000 savings. But honestly, if you can get more than that, $1,500, $2,000, that's even better, I think, now because things cost so much. Like emergencies can be expensive. So um, if I think that's something you talk with your husband about or and you decide on an amount that you're comfortable with based on your family circumstances and the emergencies that could come up for you. Um, and then after saving, one of the big things is plan for the future. And I've already kind of touched on this where I mentioned college. But one of uh, the big things that you need if you do not have it, and that is life insurance. It is so, so, so important. I cannot stress this enough. And I know so many young couples say we can't afford it. And I would say you can't afford 
to not have it. Um, my husband had his best friend from college died of a heart attack suddenly in August of 2019. Um, it was just completely out of the blue and his wife, it was the second husband she had lost to a heart attack. So she was a widow for the second time. And it was just so heartbreaking to watch that um, and everything unfold with that. And my husband's um, best friend, like just since college, that him and his wife are how my husband and I got together. We were very good friends and did all kinds of stuff together um, before my husband and I ever even went on our first date. And so we found out recently that Scott, that's his name, has lung cancer that has spread to his brain, his spine, his liver, his spleen, um, and I think a few other places that I've forgotten. And so he's takes very good care of their family and does their finances. So I feel confident that they will be taken care of in that area. But my point in all of that is you just do not know what will happen. We have no guarantees and accidents and sickness happen. So be prepared. And one thing I've allowed myself to do is think about the worst case. What would I do? I know what I would do if my husband died. It's not. And, and I know sometimes we can think, well, if we think about it and if we talk about it, it'll happen. But that's, that's not how life works. We don't, they don't happen because we talk about them. But if you talk about it and you plan for it, you plan for worst case, then you're prepared in the event that it does happen. And it's, that's something that would be so hard. I can't even imagine, but I cannot imagine going through it if I'm not prepared for it. And if one of you does the finances and the other one doesn't, and no one has a clue, uh, one of you doesn't have a clue, then if, if the spouse that does the finances, if something were to happen, if there were to be an accident where they were hospitalized for a long time or, or death, you wouldn't know what was going on. And my friend, Scott's wife, she's in that position right now. She's never handled the finances. He's always done it. So he's in a position to have to teach her a lot right now because they don't know what the future holds with his diagnosis. And so that's one thing that my husband and I, we both are involved in the finances. I know how much is in our 401k, know how much is in savings, um, know how much is budgeted for everything, know the passwords to things. That is so important um, so that you're prepared if something happens. So, and don't think that it's just your husband that needs life insurance. Um, you need it too. So think about everything you do especially if you're a stay-at-home mom. You probably do the cooking, child care, um, grocery shopping, cleaning, all of that. Think about all of that that would fall on your husband if something were to happen to you. And then get yourself insured as well. And my, my children are all older now. I have, uh, my oldest will be 21 this year. My younger son just turned 18 and Abby, my daughter, turned 17 in May. So we're in a lot different position now and wouldn't have to think about all of those types of things just because our children are so much older. Um, if something were to happen to me, they're like with the children being so much older, there isn't as much to think about. But what we have discussed and what my husband knows is that if something happens to me, my life insurance is to take care of college. And um, so we've planned this out. We've talked about it and it isn't fun conversation, but we've done it. And it makes me feel secure knowing what would happen if the worst were to happen. We have life insurance on our children. And for like the younger you are, before you have any pre-existing conditions, life insurance is not that expensive. Um so we have it on our children as well. And my husband also has disability insurance. And there is no end to the types of insurances you can have. Um, just look and see what is needed for your family. And um, But I strongly, strongly recommend life insurance for you and your husband. And I said the same thing last year. And I really, and I know there were a lot of questions about it. Um, so hopefully I've kind of 
explained it a little better this year, just the reasoning for it and why it's so important. Um, you just, you want to be prepared. And I, another thing about budgeting and, and finances and getting our finances in order is we, I don't want our children to have to worry about us. We want to be able to take care of ourselves when we're older and um, as far as our health and everything in our home, our goal is to have a paid off home by the time my husband retires. So that's something like that we'll be working on um, or working towards. And um, I don't want the burden of our care or that type of thing to be on my children. And so we have worked hard financially to plan and to save and to do things the way we feel God would have us to do. My goal is to leave a legacy for my children. And, um, and the way to do that is to plan and to do all the things I've talked about, um, budgeting, saving, living below your means, having a plan. So I want to encourage all of you, whatever your financial situation is in your marriage, whatever is going on, um, to sit down and have a conversation with your husband, talk to him. And if there's things that you want to do different or you think would benefit your family to do better, better budgeting, any of it, have that conversation and um, and talk about it and plan so that you can be prepared for the future as your children grow, that you can be prepared for emergencies and anything that might come your way. I hope um, this was helpful to you ladies and that you have a great week. Thank you.